Hello, welcome back to Jack's Jam. Today I'll be talking about Vincent Janssen and obviously his recent loan move to Fenerbahce has just been confirmed. Uh, I'm going to be speaking about Janssen and his disappointment at Spurs, maybe for reasons why he's been disappointing. So we'll start off with um, his um, his career. He's, he's still very young, still 23 years old. Uh, only just turned 23. He's... um. From his first, so he first started his career at Almere City. Uh, he got twenty nine goals from sixty nine games from a club we haven't really heard of as a youngster. That's not that's not bad, really, is it? Like that's sort of just under one every game. That's that's not bad at all. Uh, then he went to AZ Alkmaar and he, uh, he got twenty seven goals in thirty four games. Like you know, you can't really ask for much more than that. That's that's sort of that's like you know, in a Premier League season, thirty eight go- games. So that we had another two goals. That's like twenty nine goals in the Premier League season. But obviously, it's an easier league, probably easier opposition. But um, you don't, I don't, I don't mean that for sure, sort of thing. So uh, maybe they weren't the best in the league, but you know, still, that's still a lot of goals. Still, that's still a lot of good, good, good goal ratio. And then he came to Spurs, and uh, he had two goals in twenty eight games, and it's not really the best, is it really? Um, obviously, he got his debut against uh, Gillingham, our local team. We went to see them. Um, well, sorry, he got his first goal against Gillingham. Uh, we saw that at uh, White Hart Lane uh, last season, about this time last year, last August, last September, I think. And um, obviously he scored that day, and that was his first goal for, um, for Spurs. Um, in in um in terms of uh, obviously we've had we as a Spurs fan, oh no, and it's deja vu for other Spurs fans. We've had the same sort of scenario with Roberto Soldado. Like that was a bit different, maybe. Maybe the fact that it was a bit more of a desperate panic buy because obviously we needed a striker, we needed someone because Bale had left. We paid a lot of money. Obviously, we can liken to him because the fact that he scored goals like before he came, he was at Valencia and before he came to Spurs, he was a four fast goal scorer in Spain and that was only behind Messi, Ronaldo and Falcao. So uh, before joining Spurs and he struggled just as Janssen struggled when he was at Spurs. So I know I'm thinking maybe reasons for both. Janssen and Soldado struggling, like you know, I'm I'm associating this mainly on Janssen, the fact that because it's the most recent thing, but maybe it's unlucky bit of bad luck could be to do with it because obviously the Spurs football style obviously isn't the same, otherwise he'd be doing just as well at Spurs as at their previous clubs. So maybe that could be a reason why as to uh, as to why obviously they've struggled sort of thing. Um, obviously in terms of for Janssen, I don't know how to say it in terms of Soldado, but um, Janssen's obviously, he's got Kane next to him. Like, so obviously it's difficult to live up to Kane. It's difficult to sort of compare yourself because Kane's a, obviously a very good striker, very good terms, in terms of goals. Very difficult to knock him out of first team football when he's fit. Um, but even when given a game time when Kane was injured and suspended, I believe, last season, I believe Janssen still didn't impress at all. Didn't live up to the expectations that we had after joining from a club and scoring so many goals. Um, obviously, it was against Gilles. That was the only really time where like, well, I saw him better because it was right in front of me. But I thought um, he did occasionally look to hold the ball up. Not as often. Like Against Gilles, obviously, weak opposition. And in the Premier League, he does sort of try to bring other players in, tries to hold it up. But he doesn't have the same effect that Kane has. doesn't seem to have any effect at all in front of goal. Seems to, seems to miss, I remember missing an opportunity against Gilles from six yards out. Quite an easy opportunity. I think it was a header, a bit wide, quite a bit wide actually. Uh, and then obviously other opportunities as well. He hasn't really created opportunities against a tougher team while Kane was in just suspended. So, um, and obviously rather than going to Fenerbahce, he had the offer from Brighton, Brighton Hove Albion, obviously just promoted to the Premier League. Like the loan deal didn't go through and possibly that's a good thing for him because possibly English football just wasn't isn't for him. Like it could be concluded, like maybe obviously if he comes back and tries again once he's moved, once he's had his loan season at Fenerbahce, uh, it would have been against more difficult opposition when he was at Spurs, sort of thing. He's playing against the centre halves. Um, he's he's not really playing with as much. He's not going to get the ball as much as he did at Spurs. He's not going to be has many opportunities as he did at Spurs because he's against difficult opposition. He's at a weaker team, uh, so obviously that could be a good reason. But a negative reason could have been um, 
maybe as a youngster it would have been a good season to have him in the Premier League adopting the English Premier League. The fact that he's got out on loan suggests that he's still in Richo Pochettino's plans, possibly for the future. I don't know. Maybe like they've gone out on loan because they don't want him to score loads of goals from the back in and think, oh god, like you know, we could have had him rather than sort of, and like that's why maybe they've loaned him because he's still young. So obviously, that's why it could have been good for him to be at Brighton because. Not only is he getting familiar first in February with Fenerbahce, one night from Spurs, but at Brighton he'll be in the Premier League and where he would be playing if he was to stay at Spurs after his loan deal. So um, obviously it's interesting the fact that he's gone to Fenerbahce for first team football, the fact that's where Soldado is also. So uh, both of them up front, it'd be an interesting partnership if they both play. Obviously two strikers with different fans success at Spurs. If they both have good seasons then maybe we'll see that because Soldado played up front in his own at Spurs, Jansen played up front in his own at Spurs, they struggled. Maybe if they both play up front for uh, for Fenerbahce next season, then uh, maybe that they could that could ignite their sort of career. That could like they could have a good season, and that sort of suggests to Spurs about how they are capable strikers. They just need a strike partner. Because I'm sure, I remember, like Soldado had his good games. He scored a hat trick against Andy Makalaka. I'm sure. I think he got a header, a penalty, and a left foot finish. So like perfect hat trick. So um, to, to conclude, like obviously adding on, he's yet he was 19 million. Jansen Soldado was more in the marks of 25 to 30. I think more 26 million. So it's a lot of money, a lot of pressure over to put on him for a lot of football. And obviously clearly, I think because they, they've proven to score goals. You know, like no matter what league you're in, you, if you, you can find a bit of back of the net, you know what the back of the net is. So like a style of football, not the same style of football. Soldado obviously knows where the back end there is, didn't we have opportunities? Jansen knows where the back end there is, didn't have opportunities at the Spurs. So we sort this by it's clearly I think it's easy to conclude that Silent Football is not quite what they're looking for. Uh never adapted completely and possibly Spurs was too good a club to be introduced to in the Premier League. Uh, a lot of pressure put on him, like A's without come I don't really know how good they are in terms of Spurs. Like, obviously it's a big step, like I don't know I don't I don't really know how it works sort of A's without come on, like would they be in the Championship if they were the English team? Would they be in the Premier League? I don't really know. So obviously Spurs is a, a big, not only are they poss- not only are they moving up to a bigger club, but also they're changing their kind of football. So there's a lot of pressure to put on both. Same for Soldado, although he was at, obviously, uh, Valencia. That's poss- possibly why things didn't work out for him either. So, um, yeah, so taking, obviously a lot of pressure to put on. And I'd just say that obviously Jansen isn't really, not really capable of filling Kane's shoes. Possibly hasn't come at the right time, but then again, when he was getting an opportunity, he didn't really succeed at all. I think, um, I think a year out in Fenerbahce, maybe sort of pick himself up, maybe, maybe score some goals, that would be good for him. Sort of come back to Spurs, head held high, confident, it might be quite good for him, you never know, maybe next year. Like Spurs could struggle for top four, might get top six, could get Europa League, and obviously it'd be good if next year you could play in the Europa League. I believe Fenerbahce do play in Europe. Don't I don't know for sure. I think they play Europa League, uh, so obviously it'd be good for him to get to European experience as well. So I don't think he got that much that is at AZ Alkmaar or Almir City. So uh, that's obviously more more sort of experience for the lad. More um, obviously then to come back to Spurs, it'd be great to see him do well for Spurs when he comes back. So um, that's my opinion on Vincent Janssen and his poor, poor start of the season at Spurs. And now he's gone out of line. Best of luck to him. So thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, follow everything in the description. Check out League One Podcasts and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.